<laughs> Hello guys! How are you doing? How is everyone doing? I hope you're having a good day. I have to put down the credits first. Hold on. You know what they're called? Hold on guys, I'm gonna see who the credit belongs to because I wanna do it right. Story is- I got the story from Wattpad, of course I've read it first. Um, and of course I also need to put down a trigger warning, I forgot about that one. Uh, let's see. There we go. Well, what I do know about this because... Um, we have this one. We have... De geluiden van de zomer. Hij komt eraan. Goede vrienden. Check. Barbecue. All right. I know so far this out of my head. So if it's wrong, please let me know. I'll probably update it later on in, the, in this stream too. Clearly seven up free. Oh my goodness, we have quite a lot of viewers. <laughs> I didn't realize. Hello everyone! I hope you're enjoying so far. The stream will start in like a, a few minutes. I'm just rounding up the last few things. I don't know. Before it was like... Oh! There we go! I found it! Found it! Uh, there. Let's see, how can I make this friendly? There. Oh, and I can do this. I am trying to make this as friendly as possible, guys. I know this, even seeing this kind of text can get a lot of, a lot of triggering, so. Um. All right, then we have... I don't know if this is like, okay, but we'll do it like this. How can I make this less... Uh... Okay, <laughs> I, I'm realizing that this is not as it's supposed to go, but okay. Um. Mm, let's see.
Can anyone even hear me? I don't know. There we go. These are the trigger warnings, everyone. Please keep them in mind. I'm not... This is the best I can do. I'm not responsible for, responsible for anything that happens in between these things. Okay. Let's get on with the story, shall we? Oh my goodness. I'm hoping you're gonna enjoy it. And don't be like afraid to in between chat with me. I will keep I try I will try to keep an eye on chat. Okay? So let's turn down music. Like just turn off the music. There we go. And we're gonna start the chapter now. Um. Oh yeah, it's uh. Let's see. Okay, there we go. Chapter one. He must have had a life before this. A mother, a father, a home, maybe sisters or brothers. But it had all been so long, too long, and now all he knew was this bloody game. His hands knew no other shape than his fist curled tightly around the sword, swinging internally, fighting its mark through skin and bone. They all tried to run, of course. They built walls and cowered in corners, but he always found them. Sometimes they begged, sometimes they chose to jump from cliffs rather than face his reckoning, and sometimes they started they stared back at him with eyes as empty as his own, and welcomed that with open arms. Those were the ones he envied the most. Technoblade never died, they whispered, around campfires and funeral. They prayed that it wasn't true. The voices led him to kingdoms, that sh shires, and towns. It didn't matter what they offered him in return, the voices didn't demand coin, they demanded blood. They fought for bold men and stupid men, greedy kings and starry-eyed rebels. He fought for armies doomed to fail and dragged them into the light of glory. He had lost count of how many allies he'd fought beside after the time. Their names and faces had faded into recents of his hazy memory. And there and then there was the Angel of Death. He was one of the very few people with a reputation that matched, matched Technoblades. He had heard of the Angel through whisper stories, snatches of tavern gossip. I heard his ha he has obsidian wings, one patron, patron would say to another over a cup of ale. I heard he once masqueraded an entire army all by himself. He makes even the green god afraid. Technoblade had begun to imagine a ruthless man, an immortal butcher with the same wretched grin as his. But Filza was not an average angel. He was just Filza. He had met by coincidence. In a land of ice and snow. Oh, thank you so much for the follow! Oh my- No! It's behind! Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna fix it! I'm gonna fix it! Oh, no. I'm sorry that it didn't make any sound. I don't know how to fix it. I'll do it later, I promise. There we go. Thank you so much for the follow, Annie. I hope you're enjoying so far. <laughs> oh my goodness. <gasps> Thank you so much for the follow. <laughs> I hope you're all I, I hope you're both enjoying the stream. Let's 
see. They had met by coincidence in a land of ice and snow. It was barren, but they made a quick work of it together. First as allies, and then as friends. Through it all, Filza had smiled instead of grinned, laughed inside instead of cackled. On calmer days, they would while away time with tea and chess, and silent meditations that quietened the screaming in Techno's head, if only for a little while. You know, Techno said during one of their sparring matches, they had to stay in shape, of course. Because peace times never lasted as long as people hoped. The stories never talked about this side of you. Filza had paused, a small, amused smile on his face. Oh, he said. What do the stories talk about then? They call you the Angel of Death. Techno dug his heels in as Filza resumed an onslaught of bows with his dulled sword. They said you leave a path of destruction in your wake that nothing... <gasps> Techno had parried and went on defensive. That nothing scares you. Their blades met. They pushed against each other, trying to gain an upper hand. And it was only because they were standing so close that Techno noticed the shift in Filza's eyes. A momentarily coldness that was brutal as the blizzard raging outside. It was there and gone in an instant. Light returned and Filza laughed as he pushed back against Techno's swords. Stories are curious things, Filza said as he swung again, barely giving Techno time to dodge. Some of them are true. He moved so quickly, Techno could do nothing but stand there as Filza rushed Rushed him with a hilt to the ribs, knocking Techno awkward onto the training room floor. Techno scrambled to his knees, but Filza was already standing over him with his sword held high above his head. His eyes glimmered with an emotion Techno couldn't place. For once in his immortal life, kneeling there in front of the first person he called friend, Technoblade felt hunted. Then Filza lowered his weapon. He smiled gently down at Techno. The soft smile Techno was used to and offered Techno a gloved hand. And some of them are not, Filza finished. So, best of two out of three? You're a bastard, Techno said playfully, even as the voices screamed, run, run, run. He took Filza's offered hand and pulled himself up beside the man that he was sh sure could have caught him in two, no matter how dull the sword's edge was. As Filza patiently moved Techno, moved Techno through all the things he had done wrong, small things like foot placements and his hilt gripped being an inch off, Techno found it equally parts amusing and frightening that despite his eons of bloody finding, it took only a few minutes of sparring for Filza to find flaw in his technique. But then again, Techno's technique wasn't particularly polished. It took only one brutal swing to fell most people. Something told him that Filza would be harder to kill than that. They conquered nation. He and his golden-haired friends, they were baited in glory, twin gods shining in the middle of a bloody field. But as their empire grew, so did their enemies. They came in droves, day after day, and before long, Techno had forgotten what peace tasted like. Days were long and the nights were longer, every flicker of movement was a spy in the shadows, every alley was a potential traitor. Every word has a declaration of war. Their home had become a target for a thousand armies. Through it all, his one constant was Filza, until he wasn't. Technoblade simply looked up one day from a map detailing enemy lines and realized he had been talking to empty air. He had no idea how long he'd been alone, sitting in a dusty library with a stale tea untouched over the corner. 
He had no idea if Filza ever said he was leaving, or if he simply went as he arrived suddenly, swiftly, like a snowstorm. Afterwards, there was hardly any point in maintaining the empire. The voices were getting bored anyway. They wanted fresh blood. They wanted more stories, so Techno took his sword and his shield and abandoned ship. He had done it a million times before, but he thought of a chessboard lying un unused in a crumbling castle made him feeling something close to regrets. Technoblade wandered the world, questioning his thirst, trying to appease the voices. Neither of them were ever satisfied. No matter how much the chaos he dealt, there was always more work to be done. So he worked. He had no idea for how long. All he remembered from the bloody time was the sense of unfulfillment, like a story had been left unfinished halfway through. Years, decades, maybe more, it hardly mattered. In the end, he knew. It would all be the same. They would end and he would remain, always fighting, always alone. He didn't know what brought him to the kingdom in the first place. Did he really have to see it for himself? Was it simply to stay his curiosity? Was he bored? Or did he hear of a kingdom untouched by wars and pretty gorgeous of his neighbors, keeping its peace and neutrality for a century, and take it as a challenge? Whatever it was, when Techno stood under the shadow of the gilded castle watching its flag flutter leisurely in the summer breeze, he felt a flicker of once familiar emotion stir in his heart. There was something about the cobblestone walls and towers rising towards the sky that reminded him of a different palace, where cold and far away. Hello, stranger, one of the guards at one of the guards at the castle gates called out. You sightseeing? Technoblade paused as the man cheerful tone. Most of the guards that caught sight of Techno's sword and Bloodred's cape were quick to draw their weapons, but aside from spears that seemed more decorative than threatening, the guards at the gates didn't seem on guard at all. Huberish, the voices said. This is a kingdom of Huberish. Perhaps, Techno drawled, indulging the guards. Although... I suppose I'm more curious about the inside rather than the outside. Why didn't you just say so? The guard beacons techno forwards. The castle is always open for tourists. Just come right in. That was how techno found himself walking leisurely down the halls of a castle that, under normal circumstances, he would have been storming, blades drawn. The guards did draw the line at his weaponry and made him discard his sword at the door, as if Technoblade needed more than his hands, and sometimes not even those, to wreak havoc. The castle's lectureless insecurity was disproportional to the opulence within. Lush carpets softened Techno's footsteps, elegant tapeteries decorated the walls, flowers bloomed in the faces as tall as him, and oil paintings in gilded frames, paintings of solemn landscape, landscapes, of wild animals roaming a cultivated garden, of a dark-haired boy astride in a white horse, a hint of a smile in the corner of his mouth, and of the game. Technoblade stopped under the painting nestled between vases and ir of irises. Oh, he thought. That's why. It wasn't tuberish making his kingdom think they were protected from everything. It was their king. Rendered in the paint and shadow, he looked just as Technoblade remembered. the years leaving no mark on his immortal face. He was standing behind a modest stone throne, 
His hand laid gently on the shoulder of a dark-haired woman that must have been his queen. In the queen's arms was a golden-haired toddler, sleeping peacefully. On the floor by her feet, with his legs crossed under him, was another child, older, with a gold cir circlet ne nested in his brown curls. Will be! A child's shrill voice rang down the hall. Technoblade's hand itched in instinctive instinctively for his sword as he turned f from the painting and found himself facing the very same boy from the painting. The prince. He was a he was a tall, lean thing, his face still holding the faint traces of boyhood. He couldn't have been more than fourteen in the painting. He had been grinning o forever, immortalizing in the light. But there he was staring, his dark eyes unnaturally focused. As if Techno was a particularly interesting book, he was quietly picking apart in his head. Techno had seen that expression many times in the face of wizened generals looking over battlefields arrangements. Hello, the prince said cautiously. Technopl Technoblade found himself raising his hand in a smile wave. Hello. Wilby, wait for me! The voice called again, closer this time. And, heralding the appearance of another child around the bends of the hallway. By his lavish attire and the small army of servants following fretfully after him, this could only be the younger prince. Barely more than a babe in the painting, but a rather loud six-year-old. The younger prince marched forcefully towards his older brother, Willie, and clung delicately to his side as they both stared up at Techno. And who are you? the small prince said, in what must have been intended to be a threatening tone. But he sounded only like he really was a child. A visitor, Techno said, unsure of what he was meant to say now. Have you come to have an audience with our father? The older prince asked in a decidedly more even tone. You can't, the younger prince snapped at once, tightening his hold on his older brother's shirt, shirt font. That promise today was our day with him, so you can't just leave now. Thank you. Tommy, calm down. But Wilbur, that's sad. I know what father said, Tommy. The older prince, Wilbur. Then not Wilby. Gods know what Techno would have said and done if the man truly named his son Wilby. He was staring at Techno like a vulture, waiting for a dying animal to drop. So, visitor. What is your business here? I have no business, Techno said. I am visiting, sightseeing. I'm a traveler. First you are a visitor, and now you are a traveler. A smile tugged on the prince's lips. This exchange would be much easier if we know your name. Dignablade glanced at the servants lining the hall behind the princess, clearly in earshot but did fully maintaining the illusion of privacy. But if they knew their father at all, they would know that most of those standing guard around his sons would be lethal killers. He just hadn't anticipated the arrival of a god. What would they do if they heard his name? Would any of them recognize it? Would they know what it meant to have him stand before their young princess? How long would they last against him? As he looked down at the two brothers, the voices whispered f how frail their necks must be. Blood for the blood god they, they coursed. But instead, Techno found himself saying, My name is... Technoblade? Technoblade lifted his eyes from the younger prince and found himself staring at their father. Filza? Filza stood at the end of the hallway, Undoubtedly following the familiar 
cannons of his son's voices. He glanced at them now, still standing before Technoblade, like unwitting sheep waiting for slaughter. But Filsa's eyes showed no fear. Instead, when he looked back at Techno, he only smiled, his face softening with a familiar relief. The expression of a man after a long, hard-fought war, seeing peace on the horizon at last. Old friends, Filsa said, it's nice to see you again. Traitor, the voices clamored. Traitor, traitor, traitor! Father, Lubus' voice brought them back to reality. This was a different castle, a different time. Do you know this stranger? Well, obviously, Wilbur. Tommy rolled his eyes. That just said his name, didn't he? Technoblade. That's a dumb name. Tommy! Bilza premiered, with no real heat behind his words. He drew closer to them, his step quiet and even. The servants that followed the two boys bowed in deference to their liege. Despite him wearing no crown, in fact, he looked... Just as much as a traveller as Techno was, dressed in, s in simple trousers and shirts, perfect for blending in, perfect for a man on the run. It's been a long time, Filsa said when he reached them, putting a gentle hand on the top of Tommy's blonde hair. The boy arced forward in the touch like a sunflower reaching f towards the sun. Technoblade didn't know if the move was calculated or just a simple act of affection. Or knowing, Filsa, both. How have you been? How have I been? Techno repeated, numbly, feeling a familiar chill creep into his bones. Phil, I... Actually, Filsa interrupted before kneeling to look his boys in the eyes. Wilbur, take your brother out to the garden for a bit, yeah? Wilbur prouded, for once looking like a boy's age. But you said, I know what I promised, and I keep my promises, don't I? Phil ruffles Wilbur's hair, then Tommy's. I join you in a moment. I just need to have a talk with Technoblade here. Wilbur stared at his father for a long moment, as if weighing the truth of his words, before nodding. He took his brother's hand and in his and began leading him away. Come on, Tommy, he said. Let's play outside. Technoblade is a dumb name, Tommy muttered as he passed him, closely followed by their servants. Wilbur met Technoblade's eyes just for a moment before they were gone, down the hall, out of sight, leaving Technoblade alone with the king. Technoblade turned towards Filsa, his old friends and found the smile whipped clean from his face. Bilsa gestured down the hall. Walk with me. Technoblade could only nod and follow Filsa. They were quiet as they walked. Techno remembered days like these, during the time together. Long days of com compassionable silence, they simply existed together. But there was something different this time. There was an edge. Techno could sense Filsa si sizing him up, tallying his hidden weapons, calculating his improvements. In turn, Techno mapped his escape routes as Filsa led him through the halls. Then up a sweeping flight of stairs, he did not want to expect violence from Filsa, but he hadn't expected to be left either. They reached the balcony overlooking a garden where most of, flower, most of the flowers indoors undoubtedly came from. Pizzeria and ivy grew around the marble pillars, rose bushes and dandelions and cardaron carnations bloomed as a maze at the foot of elaborate stone statues. At the center of the garden, was a weeping willow, its branches providing the shade for the two boys chasing each other across the grass. Their laughter echoed through the glade, reaching even Techno and their father high up on the balcony. For a while, the two of them just watched the two princes, 
Wilbur was obviously faster than Tommy, but he slowed his pace just enough for his little brother to have fun chasing his heels. They're a handful. Tilsa's soft tone turned Techno's attention away from the princess. The king was almost smiling, but the hard glint in his eye didn't disappear. Wilbur was quieter, before Tommy was born. A little bookworm. Hold up in his room all day, but I have a feeling you didn't drop by for silly stories like that. Tilsa turned towards Techno. So, go ahead. Let me have it. Techno didn't know what he was meant to feel. He didn't know what he was meant to say. For years, he had put Felsa out of his mind, determined to forget that intrul of pace. He had let the memories fester like untreated wounds. And now he thought he would rather die of the infection than acknowledge out loud that it was real, that the pain was there at all. I didn't mean to drop by. Techno said eventually. I didn't know this place was yours. I can leave if you... No. Tilsa shook his head. Don't leave. Truth be told, this reunion, reunion was invenable. Or I hoped it was. How long have you been here? Tilsa considered. How long has this kingdom been standing? Still, that... I know. People like us aren't meant to stay in one place for too long. Bills aside and turned back towards the horizon. He leaned his arms against the brawn. Hold on. Hmm? Broad iron railing and looked out as the land be at the land beyond. The slope of the distant mountains, the kingdom that stretched on and on, unaware of their immortal king, was all that stood between them and destruction. I found a small town while I was traveling. Made it something more. I told myself I would leave after a year. And it became two years, three years, a decade. I did leave, eventually, before they figured out why their town major never aged. But then I found out the moment I left, Filsa's expression turned cold. They were annihilated. I came back and everything, everyone has had been burned to the ground. It was just ashes. Everything I built, there were survivors, of course. And they blamed their leader for leaving. Of course, as they should. So I stayed. I built it back up again. From a small, decriminated town to what you say today. As far as the people know, leadership has been passed on from king to another who looks vaguely like him. I'm sure the eldest of them have their rumors. But is it really so bad to be known? Technoblade didn't realize until Phils had turned back to him that he expected an answer to his question. But Elp... But all Techno could say was, Is this why you left me behind? Techno, no, I understand. You hear, you heard the place you loved was in trouble. So you came back. But I don't... I just... Why didn't you take me? Here it was, at last. Catherine's, or something close to it. I would have hunted them down for you, Filsa. The people who did that to your town, I would have given you your revenge on a silver platter. I would have given you the world. Filsa didn't look guilty. He just looked tired. I didn't hunt them down, though. What? The people who burned down my town, I didn't hunt them down. As much as I wanted to. They were long gone by the time I arrived. And at that moment, my people needed a leader, not a hunter. And I didn't bring you because... Because I don't know when to be either. They stood there, letting the words settle in silence that stretched taunter and taunter like a rope around Techno's neck. Deny it, he wanted to shout. Tell me I'm wrong. Bills I did not. 
I don't need to hear this from you. Technoblade spat. Well, of old hurt and anger, once dried up, began to fill anew. Do your sons even know what you are? Who you are? The angel of death? Domesticated? What a phrase. Filsa stiffed. You know not of which you speak. Once you saw a tear... I once saw you tear a man apart with your bare hands. And now you're telling me about leadership? About kindness? I said nothing of, ca of kindness. If I had completely renounced my ways, my kingdom would not be what it is today. Domesticated dog still bites. Filsa stepped towards him until they were eye to eye. Despite the accusations, Techno hurled at him. Despite their bloody history, Techno had never truly seen Filsa angry. But he had a feeling that if he kept running down this road head first, he might find himself knowing the full extent of his old friend's wrath. Filsa's eyes were hard as flint, one spark away from combustion. Technoblay glances down at the garden. Bill followed his gaze until they were both staring back at the two boys below. Who had chased their playing to wonder at their father and the stranger. They couldn't have heard a thing of what Filsa or Techno said, but Wilbur stood with his head cocked in inquisitively to the side. As he were turning tuning Turning over the words. He? Okay. Dad! Tommy shouted. Are you almost finished? Almost! Filza called back. I'll be right down, kids! Tommy elbowed Wilbur and said something that made the other boy throw his head back in laughter. Then the two of them took off, back to their games, back to their honey childhood. When Filza... When Technoblade turned to Phil again, the king's expression had turned consid considerably softer. Techno could live another thousand years and still never understand how easily Filsek could hide his fury. I wasn't trying to settle down, Filsek said quietly now, as if he was imploring a child to stop a tantrum. His eyes were still on his sons below. I was content for a while. To watch the kingdom grow, but these mortals and their short, pitiful lives. They draw you in, Technoblade. I used to think they were months drawn, moths drawn to a flame, doomed to catch fire for the most inconventional reasons. They, we have seen their wars, you and I. We fought them. We both know the things they do to each other. Filza took a hold of the balcony railings, as if it was the only thing keeping him from floating away. But over the years, I've also learned of the things they do for each other. Their lives will always be one year, one week, one day short. But it doesn't seem to matter much to them. They live anyway. They love anyway. Forgive an old god for wanting a piece of that for himself. A late morning breeze passed through the carry with the scent of flowers and the shredded remains of Techno's anguish. The fury was still there, and the feeling of betrayal so grand it might never be bridged. But the exhaustion had begun to settle in. Techno was used to quick balls and long hunts, but verbal altercations was not something he'd ever trained for. Mostly because he had not cared to speak to anyone that mattered since... Since forever, perhaps. And maybe Filsa had been tired too, of their life before. Always fighting, never safe. Although Techno... Although Techno thought it was only a matter of time before this game of peace was over. He thought maybe it could start... He could start to understand why Phil took the chance. It was a foolish move, and Technoblade would scoff at it for the rest of their immortal lives. But it would not be the worst choice anyone had ever made. Technoblade had seen the worst, and this was barely a drop in the ocean of bad decisions. Still, it was stupid. 
and one look at Filza and Technoblade realize he must know it too. Are they like you? Techno asked at last, unsure of the answer he was waiting for. Your boys? Filza sighed. I would not, would not wish my fate upon my worst enemy. Least of all on my own children. His hands tightened around the railing. They take after their mother, mortal, good in all ways. I think every god that has ever existed for that, but sometimes... Sometimes? Techno prompt when the silence stretched too long. Filsa's jaw clenched. It's Wilbur. He speaks of voices. Voices? Filsa met Techno's eyes. A conversation from lifetimes ago replayed in Techno's mind. A moment of vulnerability in a castle not so different from this one. Where he had spilled his secrets as easily as he spilled blood. The voices fill. They demand blood. There was a world's worth of agony in Filsa's stare. A burden only understood by a parent fearing for a child. I am glad he is not like me, Filsa said, but sometimes I fear he is growing more like you. Techno's breath hitched at his throat. He resisted the urge to look down again, to search the grass for, for the boy with the ancient eyes. The voice began to sing. Not alone, they said. Not alone, not alone, not alone. No, Techno said, curling his hands into his fist, digging his nail into, f into flesh until he they drew blood. His daily pants. He is but a child. Techno paused. What was he talking about? What did it matter what Wilbur was? What was this sudden ache in his chest? Something telling for far deeper wounds. An older application? He did not know this boy. He could not care. He did not care. But then Filsa seized him by the wrist, as if he knew Techno was about to take off running and forced him to meet his tortured gaze. That is why I hoped you would take the truth to be told. I was very close to looking for you myself. I cannot do this by myself, Technoblade. As much as I want to, you're the only one. You want my help, Techno said dully. My help. After you abandoned me, after you denounced my my ways and called me a monster. Technoblade flinched, or Filsa flinched. I would never call you that, my friend. Friend. The word that Technoblade had only truly understood in the days of snow and sweet tea. I don't owe you anything, Technoblade said quietly. I don't owe that. That child anything. I know. And I have better things to do with my time. I know. After all you did, I shouldn't even be listening to you right now. I should just leave. I know, Techno, I know. And then, Phil said it's something Technoblade would never, in a hundred of a million years, have expected from him to do. He kneeled. Filza, once emperor, present king, angel of death, kneeled before Technoblade, grasping, grasping frantically at his cloak, his golden hair bowed. The voices were a chorus of disgust and disdain. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. And when Filza spoke again, his voice wavered. I am sorry, truly, for leaving, but I am asking you, Begging you for do this to me. For my son, for the friendship that we once shared. Techno, please, please. I do not know how much time the gods will give us. What will you have me to do? Techno demanded, his own voice fraying at the edges. What do you expect of me, Phil? Bilzal looked up at him, his face steady in agony. Stay, 
stay and help as much as you can and together maybe we can help you as well. The voices paused, just for a moment, just for a breath, as they all considered the weight of Filsa's words, and God's, that silence, however brief, however fleeting, was the sweetest thing that Technoblade had ever heard. We can help you. What did it mean exactly? What would that entail? Technoblade didn't know, and didn't care. He had come here in search of a kingdom of peace, and he had found it. Forgiven old goals for God for wanting a piece of that for himself, Ilsa had said. And that was peace, if not the silence. Was that not freedom at last? So, as the voices began to chant anew, and an immortal hunter afforded an immortal king his hand. The sun climbed higher towards the heart of the sky as Technoblade pulled Filsa to his feet, and they were on equal ground once more. He had no idea what he was doing, but there was no true alternative. So Technoblade met his old friend Gaze and said, Alright, you and me, one more time. Wilbur did not know what to make of the visitor, the traveller, whatever he was. Father had come down to the garden with him, and Wilbur could tell he was sad. He didn't know if the visitor had been the cause or something else, someone else. A formal introduction is in order, Father had told Wilbur and Tommy. This is Technoblade, an old friend. He'll be torturing you for a while, Wilbur. Wilbur had stared up at the man. Seeing him from the soft morning light as at last, Technoblade, Tommy was right. It was a pretty dumb name, and one Wilbur had heard before, though he wasn't sure where. He was tall and lean, and most likely a few years older than Wilbur. He was dressed like him too, with poofy sleeves that Tommy always said make him look like an old man. An emerald earring hung from Technoblade's left ear, similar to the one that Father wore on a golden chain around his neck, tucked secretly under his dress shirt. Was he some sort of royalty too, then? Some foreign prince of a distant cousin that Father never bothered to tell Wilbur about. But I kept many secrets. This may just be one of the million. Technoblade had taken one look at Wilbur, nodded, and then said, We'll start at dawn, before leaving them. Wilbur had stared after him, perplexed. What? Father had shrugged and, keep his, and to keep a smile off his face. That's techno for you. Now they were sitting in the dining hall, each in their own thoughts, except Tommy whose thoughts must always come out of his mouth regardless of who was was or wasn't listening. And Wilbur tripped me, but I got up very quickly. You saw that, didn't you, Dad? Dad? Didn't you? I saw, I saw. Father said distractedly. He was staring down at his half-eaten plate, as if it held secrets of the universe. Wilbur assumed that it was only doing it so he wouldn't be staring at Mother's empty seat. She had been taking more and more of her meals in, her bed in their bedroom. Tommy hadn't noticed yet, but Wilbur did. Wilbur always did. And this techno fellow? He's a bit of an old one, isn't he? Will he be training me too? Will I have to wake up at dawn like Wilbur? Wilbur grimaced. Please don't remind me, Tommy. Tommy stuck his tongue out at him from across the table. It's not like you have any other plans. I'm sure you'll be staying up reading again, he suggested dramatically to himself. I, for one, would love to be on the tutelage of Mr. Technoblade, stupid as his name may be. The two of them turned to their father. One with starry-eyed expectation, the other with mobile curiosity. Father sighed fondly before ruffling Tommy's hair. Sorry, little bud. Maybe we can find someone else for you. I'm sure the captain would be willing to, 
But I want a blade, Tommy whines. Wilbur snorted. Yeah, as if you could even wake up early enough. You'll still be in bed by noon. I can see it now. Father gave Wilbur a cheeky grin. He only reserved for his eldest son. Tell you what, Tommy. If you can wake up with Wilbur, when you then you can watch him train with Techno. Truly? Tommy kicked back from the table, nearly upsetting Father's glass of wine. Good night, then. Early to bed, early to prize, they always say. Who says that? Wilbur said, but Tommy had already, had already gone off, leaving Wilbur with their father in silence. For a while, the only sounds were Newton stills scraping against the plate and Wilbur's heartbeat in his ears. He would never admit it to Tommy or anyone. But his relationship with his father was always better with his brother around. It wasn't that Wilbur didn't love his father, or that he, or that he thought that his father didn't love him. Wilbur couldn't remember it happening, but somewhere along the way of studying warfare and politics, of staring up at the throne that would one day be his, of learning how to be a prince, he had forgotten how to be a son. And sometimes, when father thought he couldn't see, father would look at him with a bottomless grief, like he was mourning something already lost. It should be Tommy, Wilbur had thought. Sonny Tommy, who had managed to charm everyone he met in spite of, or perhaps because of, his loud disproportion. Not the, not him. Not when father looked at him like that. Wilbur swallowed the last of his dinner and was set to go. If not for his father speaking once more. Wilbur? Yes, father. Father leaned against his hand as he consi considered Wilbur. Do you want me to be there for you tomorrow? Wilbur scoffed half-heartedly. I'm not a child, father. Of course, father said. But Technolade is still stranger to you. Wilbur pushed his lips as he thought about his father's words. Do you trust him? Yes, father replied at once. Wilbur nodded. Then I trust him. Father stared at him for a long minute and then nodded. There was nothing else to say, it seemed. And so Wilbur left, leaving his father to be quiet. Tommy's door was firmly shut by the time Wilbur arrived at their sleeping quarters. Wilbur's own door stood ajar, waiting. Moonlight spilled from the arced windows. Paintings, painting everything in silver. The bed littered with half-finished books, and the desk bearing scars from Wilbur's manifold frustration in writing music for the guitar that sat discarded, discarded on the floor. Mother had given him that guitar for his 10th birthday. He used to play lullabies or spooky songs when he was in the mood for older brother mischiefs for Tommy. Before Tommy, he decided he was a big man and moved out of the bedroom across the hall. His body felt heavy with thoughts. Technoblade, the boy who looked not much older than him, now tossed as torturing him at... At what? Father had not been forthcoming with that, amongst other things. With a sigh, Wilbur wrapped the guitar from the floor and dragged it with him to the window. As he plucked idly at the strings, he gazed out at the horizon beyond the glass, spalling lawns of the castle ending at the four bonding gates, and then after that, his kingdom, his birthright. He played a single distant chord. Nothing had come easily to him recently. Music, literature, conversation, everything, all at once, had become taxing. Even laughing with it, his brother felt like a chore. Louis' fingers still on what was undoubtedly going to be another bad note. Something was moving down on the lawn. He squinted his... He squinted at the figure until it became into sharper focus. 
Technoblade? Wilbur pressed his face closer to the glass, just to make sure his eyes had not deceived him. There, there were many people in the kingdom with pink hair, but perhaps fewer who had moved with the lethal grace of a python. Technoblade walked across the lawn and disappeared past the gates without a glance back. It wasn't until his breath fogged the window completely that Wilbur realized he was hyperventilating. He pulled away from the glass and stumbled over the guitar on his way to his bed. He pulled the covers over himself as if the darkness would dampen his thoughts. Where is he going? Followed by, will he come back? Will he come back? Will he come back? You're late. Wilbur blinked in this dim sunlight, barely breaking through the horizon. What? He blinked some more until he finally recognized his surroundings. The smooth marble floor, the four columns sculpted like gods, bearing up the flat roof. Ivy following over the roof's edge like a waterfall, containing them off from the rest of the garden. This one, had, this was the trading pavilion. Father's personal training area, where he attempted to teach Wilbur fencing before it became clear that weapon weaponry was not to be Wilbur's fort. All right, son, father had said carefully, turning to the cut on Wilbur's leg from his own rapier. Kings don't really need to know how to fight. That's what army are for. Father had, father had sounded angrily as he said this, but Wilbur somehow knew it wasn't because of him. But you know how, Wilbur had prouded, dutifully trying to hold back tears as father applied stinging herbs to his wound. Well, father said, that's different. Different how? Just different, father had finished. Father had finished trying, tying the bandages around Wilbur's leg and smiled at him. I'll tell you when you're older. He never had. But it wasn't father standing before Wilbur today. Well, Technoblade said, gesturing to the heavy chest in in the corner. We're burning daylight here, little prince. Hurry up. Wilbur blinked again. Sorry, but how did I... Technoblade stared at him quietly as they both waited for Wilbur to finish his sentence. His eyes are red. Wilbur noted distantly. Even as he struggled to remember anything else, he could not recall falling asleep or waking up or walking down to meet his new tutor for, the, for their first lesson. Well, Technoblade brought it. Wilbur shook his, head, shook his head. Nothing, nothing. What are we, um, learning today? Technoblade cocked his head to the side, unimpressed. His hair had been pulled into a braid so tight that it hurts Wilbur's scalp by proxy. Phil said, said you were crap at fencing. Wilbur grimaced at, as he walked over to the chest, kneeling to filter through its contest, contents. That's one way of saying it. He picked up one of the swords and turned to Technoblade, who had apparently brought his own weapon. A wicked looking board sword with a ruby and encrusted hilt. I'm a bit better at long ranged weapons, if you were wondering. I wasn't. Technoblade snorted. Get into position. Wilbur did. That's not correct. Wilbur sighed. I told you. Technoblade walked closer to Wilbur and they were until they were eye to eye. Wilbur was a few a few inches taller than him, he realized, at least at least until Wilbur knocked him flat on his back with a sudden blow to the stomach. The air left Wilbur's lungs at the, in a rush. He blinked hazily up at the ceiling for a moment before the indignation set in. He leaned himself against 
his elbows and glared at his tutor, who was looking more and more unimpressed. You could have withstood that if you were in the correct position, Technoblade drawled. You could have warned me, Wilbur spat, climbing to his feet. Oh? Is that how fights go, your highness? Technoblade mocked. All right, then, if it pleases you, your highness, I shall be striking your shoulder with the flat of my neck, of my blade next. What? Quicker than a breath, Technoblade did just that. Wilbur landed on his side, his own weapon flying out of his hands. Technoblade laughed with no real warmth. I even warned you this time, and I still knocked you over. Gods, you're pathetic. Wilbur wanted to say, I'm calling my father, but caught himself before he could give that immunion to the smug. Instead, he got shakily to his feet, his entire body, body smarting from the impact with the floor, and picked his raper up from the, gro from the ground. He got into position again. Technoblade raised one eyebrow. This would go faster if you told me what's wrong with it, Wilbur grumbled. This would go even faster if you didn't rumble your basics, Technoblade resorted. Shut up. Strong demands from a boy who can't even get his left foot placed properly. Wilbur considers his words. His mo he moved his left foot inch by inch. Watching Technoblade until the man finally gave a curt nod, Wilbur sighed. See? That wasn't... Oh my gods. Wilbur barely had time to throw up his rapier before Technoblade pressed his sword against it. Steel hissed. Wilbur's knees buckled under Technoblade's surprising strength. It felt like having an entire house collapse on him. And if he fell, he would be crushed. Technoblade fell back, leaving Wilbur with his heart hammering in his chest. What was that? Wilbur demanded. You could have killed me that time. I could have killed you multiple times since you first walked in here. Technoblade gestured for him to get into position. Again, again, again. Never let your guard down, your highness. Always assume the enemy is planning to strike. What even is the point of this? Wilbur asked. The kingdom has been at peace for God knows how long, and I don't need to risk my my neck for a skill that doesn't even matter. Technoblade considered him for a long moment, the silence between them only broken by the beginnings of bird songs at the, re at the rest of the world finally began to wake. And what will you do when it does matter? Technoblade asked. It never will. But let's say it will, Technoblade interrupted, taking a step towards Wilbur, his red eyes never once leaving the prince's face. Let's say, hypothetically, that a foreign army attacks at this very moment. Your father isn't here to help. Nobody's here to help, it's just you. Do you just stand here and get thrown get torn apart by the mob? Or will you run like a coward and leave your kingdom to the wolves? Wilbur flinched. That's not... Not even... Nor... Not even an army. Consider, if you... Will... Just one very smart, very angry person. And they've got your brother. Technoblade smirked at whatever expression was on Wilbur's face. That's all it takes, you know, to kill a kingdom. A single person who knows your weak spots... So what you need to do is get rid of them. The weak spots, I mean. This kingdom is only imprenetable. Imp Jesus, my English is going badder and badder the more I read. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Alright. Let's see. Where was I? Um... In panet in hold on, I need to do this. Oh my goodness, it went so well the whole time, and now I can't do it anymore. Impenetrable. Oh my goodness, it's such an easy words. This kingdom is only imp impenetrable 
because Filza has long ago gotten rid of every vul vulnerability. So what happens when you take the throne? That's not true, Wilbur said quietly, standing in the downpour of Technoblade's words. My father... He does have vulnerabilities. He has mother, Tommy... Me? But he has the power to protect them, Technoblade replied, and you don't. That's the difference. The sun has climbed higher into the sky, painting everything in gold. Through the gasps of the ivy, the warm light shone on Wilbur's skin, warming him from the inside out. He imagined the lights seeping into his skin, into his bones, into his, the crack of his soles, until he could be made whole again. A boy of sunlight, like Tommy. He wanted the sun to burn away the tiredness, the sadness, the thoughts. He wanted the sun to burn Technoblade, too, with his harsh words and made harsher by the truth. Wilbur took a shaky breath, letting the fresh air in and tapering it in, in his lungs for as long as he could. Then he let it out. He glared at Techno and then got into position. Fine, he spat. Do your worst. Wilby, you look like trash, Tommy said brightly over a plate of eggs. Tommy, father scolded. No, no, Technoblade mumbled through a mouthful of meat. The boy's right, though. Wilby, you just look like trash. Wilbur groaned at, the, at their remarks, and then groaned some more when, he, when the movement made his ribs feel like they were cracking apart. Bristles were already starting to form up and down his arms. From the various times Technoblade had knocked him to onto the floor. He couldn't even reach for his uten still without pain lacing up his side. And so his breakfast remained tantalizing out of reach right in front of him. Tommy's initial annoyance at sleeping in and missing the blade in action was only matched by his absolute delight at seeing his older brother so bad at and there exceeded by his excitement when father invited Technoblade for breakfast to recount how terribly Wilbur had performed. It was to crack his progress, or, or some sort of ex excuse like that. So Wilbur guesses father just wanted to stop Technoblade from disappearing whenever he goes off. Like last night. Did he cry? Tommy demanded, particularly vibrating off, practically vibrating off his chair. Technoblade, seated next to him, cut another piece of his meat and chewed ponderously on it before answering, "Almost." We get it. Tommy breathed. Father glanced at Wilbur worriedly, thinking in the bruises. Techno, maybe next time you can go easy a bit. No, Wilbur said hurriedly. Wincing when his sore limbs protested. No, I told him to not hold back. Father raised an eyebrow. I doubt that. No, really, I need this, father. Wilbur insisted. His legs felt like lead and some of his bones were definitely misplaced. But by the end of their five-hour session, he had learned where to strike to kill and where to strike to incapitate or how to block attacks as much as to deal with them, and how to fight off stronger opponent, um, po opponents. Which for you would be all of them, Technoblade had said, as he tightened Wilbur's grip on his reaper. Let the boy bruise a bit, Phil, Technoblade said, now downing a glass of wine. It's good practice, good distraction too. Distraction? Wilbur looked to his father, but he was busy, busy trying to force a bowl of vegetables on Tommy. When he looked again, Wilbur found himself meeting eyes with Technoblade. The other boy was considering him at length. Wilbur had caught sight of that expression multiple times in the past five hours, like Technoblade was inspecting him. Less with Secure unity of a teacher and more with the intense focus of a 
surgeon, trying not to make the wrong cut. What? Wilbur finally asked. Do I have something on my face? Yes. Defeat. Wilbur resisted the urge to stick his tongue out like Tommy undoubtedly would have. You are very... You are a very rude guest. You are a very weak prince. I didn't see what my physical power... Or lack of three of... Technoblade insi inserted. Has to do with you being such a pissy bastard. Wilbur finished hotly. Wilbur! Father said. Leveling his face to his oldest son. Cursing in front of your baby brother? I thought you better manage than that. I'm not a baby, Tommy protested. And what does piss... I think that's my cue to go, Technoblade interrupted, suddenly rising to his seat. To where? his father asked. None of your business, actually, Technoblade replied. Not flippantly or ar arrogantly, just stating facts. Father scrub tightened infant... Infinite infinitesimally on his spoon. I think it is my business if you're living in my castle. Technoblade shrugged. Try and stop me then. They start. They stared each other down. A king and his visitor. Red eyes on blue. A moment passed and then another. Father did not move. That's what I thought. Technoblade scoffed and then disappeared with a whirl of fur and scarlet silk. Wilbur glanced at father, trying to bog his reaction. Father had never seemed truly old, but in that moment it felt like Wilbur was watching him age a thousand years per second. Who is he really? Wilbur asked before he could lose the nerve. Father blinked slowly, as if coming out of a dream. An old friend, I told you. From when? He can't be that old of a friend. He's just a teenager. When did you meet him? Wilbur repeated. Father pursed, pursed and unpursed his lips. Like he was trying to swallow something ra rancid. Why does it matter, Wilbur? Because you look at him like you look at me, and I don't know what to make of that. Father's gaze pinned Wilbur to his seed. Even more than the soreness of his body did. Even Tommy had fallen quiet. Sensing, in the way that younger siblings do, that his brother was in a sort of trouble that required absolute silence. Hello! How are you? Hope you're having a good day. <laughs> Hello, guys. I'm happy to see that you're all here. Do you think I should put the title of the story on the screen? I think I should. I'm going to put the title of the story in the screen. Hold on. Let me... And we're calling it Title at Source. There we go. Perfect. I should make a line out around it. Hold on. Um outline. There we go. Making a bit. Oh, there we go. Perfect. See? Oh, it's not in the middle. Not in the middle. Okay, this is as far in the middle as you're gonna get. <laughs> in the in one end it's like five hundred and twelve pixels and the other hand is five hundred and eleven pixels. So this is as far as in the middle as you're gonna get it. Alright. 
Uh, let's see. Let's see what's what the. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be... But how are- how is it? Oh, I am good! Um... I am good. I'm good. My throat is a bit, like, sore, but be because of the reading, but I'm good. Oh my goodness, we've already been reading for, like, one and a half hour. And I'm only at the middle of the second chapter, guys. This is this is gonna have to go in in parts, you know. Because otherwise, it won't fit. It won't fit. So, okay. Uh, let's continue. All right. Okay with everyone. Oh, I feel Leon. There we go. All right. And how do I look at you, Will? Father asked. Like I disappoint you? Like I did something to hurt you and you're sad I can't remember that? It doesn't matter, Wilbur mustered what was left of his strength and rose from his seat. My other non-violent tutors are waiting. If you'll excuse me, Father. Tommy. Tommy stared back at him, wide-eyed. Father only sighed. It's a long story, Wilbur, he said with infinite patience. Wilbur would have preferred he screamed. And not the one you're ready to hear, either of you, he added, giving Tommy a reassuring smile. But one day I'll... Sure. Wilbur turned to him, turned to them, and began to walk away. One day, whenever that is. He expected a brutal or perhaps wanted one. But as always, there was nothing left to say. It carried on like that for months. Every morning, Will would pull himself out of bed and head down the gardens where Technoblade would always be waiting, even after the times he threatened to leave that and the times that it looked like he was truly going to. Technoblade would walk Te Wilbur through his stances and corrected them by demonstrating how exactly it could be turned against him. The tutor was never fully pleased, but eventually they made their way through the weapons in the chest and had to request for more to practice with spears and knives and axes. They never spoke beyond the usual instructions, and Wilbur never complained again when a few weeks in he almost, almost disarmed Technoblade during a sparring sessions with the reap Reaper, before Technoblade inevitably knocked him over again. I almost got you, Wilbur had grinned, even when he picked himself up from the floor. Almost won't cut it in a battlefield, Princeling, Technoblade had said with a roll of his eyes, and I was going easy on you. Whatever helps you sleep at night. Technoblade snorted, I don't sleep. Wilbur was still debating whether he would be joking or not. Eventually, Tommy's jealousy outweighed his drowsiness, and he began to follow Wilbur to the training pavilion. Yawning all the way, with his blanket wrapped around his shoulders and trailing in the dewy grass, he would sit on the floor shouting unhelpful advice and laughing at his brother's failures. Technoblade, the younger princess said at, at one point. Will you train me alongside Wilbur? Technoblade had eyed Tommy as his and his blanket, looking so serious that Wilbur thought he might actually be sizing his little brother up. Well, you do have you do have familiar skill levels. Hey Wilbur tossed a stary stary pebble at Techno's head. It bounced harmlessly off his braided hair. I want to be strong like you, Tommy said, uncharned uncharacteristic solemn as he stared up the older boys and like that he raised his 
bring wrangling arms up to them. Look at these Technoblade, they're pulsing with potential. Technoblade arched an eyebrow at him. An amused smile tugged at his lips. Little prince, you are years away yet from needing to learn anything. Your brother's training so you don't your brother is training so you don't have to understood. So Tommy prouded but nodded. Wilbur stared at him, feeling as if he had just witnessed the taming of a wild beast. He glanced at Technoblade, who had walked over to one corner of the pavilion to stretch. How did you get Tommy not to kick and scream like he does when he doesn't get the, what he wants from me? Wilbur called out. I don't kick and scream, Tommy huffed. I let out a man I let out a manly whine. It's probably because he respects me and not you, Technoblade replied cutly. Wilbur whirl whirled his to his brother. Is that true? he demanded. With fox of hurt. Tommy shrugged. I would respect you more if you weren't such weren't reading all the time. I'm not reading now, Wilbur said. At the same time, Technoblade called. I know how to read too, just to put it out there. Afterwards, they would eat breakfast together. Sometimes it would just be Wilbur, Technoblade and Tommy going over to practice session. Technoblade was with his dry con corrections and Tommy with his enthusiastic, unbuilt, often inaccurate inputs. But often, Father would join them, and Wilbur would be lying if he said that he didn't feel a bit violated when Technoblade praised, or as close as the men could get to praise, his improvements in front of their father. Mother had taken a waking late, and it took her and took her breakfast in her room. They would visit her there, Wilbur and Tommy, but she would often be too tired to speak at all. Tommy tried to introduce Technoblade to her once, but she was already asleep again by the time they arrived at her bedchambers. Probably for the best, Technoblade said. I've been told I don't make great first impressions with mothers, mostly because I met them after I just slaughtered their children. Please reserve, reserve the morbid jokes for after Tommy's gone to bed, Technoblade, Wilbur said. What does slaughter mean? Tommy asked. I tickled them, Technoblade said. Oh, to death. Oh. Wilbur had hit Technoblade on the shoulder, but he was laughing too. Three months in, Technoblade finally relented to letting Wilbur practice long-ranged weapon. Which means... Which turned out not to be his bet for best for it after all. The session had stopped after Wilbur almost took Tommy's eye out with an arrow. Tommy was inconsolable. Please don't tell father, Wilbur begged as he kneeled in front of his wailing brother, wiping Tommy's cheeks as fast as the tear came. It was an accident, Tommy. Technoblade was crackling, leaning against one of the pavilion sculptured pillars. You should see your face! He managed to wheeze out be before out between his goths. Oh god, this is too hilarious. Wilbur turned to glare at him. You do know that if he tells father, that means you're in trouble too. Technoblade snorted, snorted. I'm not scared of you, father. Yeah, was it again? The arrogant dismissal of as if father was nothing to him. Wilbur clenched his, draw, his jaw to keep the barbed marks from spilling. Tommy was still wailing, his tiny face turning red from the effort. Okay, Technoblade said after a long moment. That's getting annoying now. Stop. Tommy didn't stop. Tommy, stop, Technoblade said more loudly. Tommy stopped, only to, whine, to wipe his nose on his sleeve. Pick up and will again. What is wrong with him? That usually works, Technoblade grumbled, stalking closer to them with the caution of a hunter approaching a wild animal. Welcome to the world of Big Brotherhood, Wilbur replied barely, still wiping gently at Tommy's face. 
We hope you enjoy your stay, but most likely you will suffer. Technoblade came to kneel beside Wilbur. Tommy, Technoblade demanded. That is very irritating what you are doing. Please quiet down. Tommy responded by crying louder. Oh, for the love of... What will it take you to shut up? I'll do anything at this point. The crying stopped immediately. Oh, God. Wilbur put his face in his hands. You're not supposed to say that, Techno. You're never supposed to say that. What? What? Technoblade demanded. Panic seeping into his voice for the first time since Wilbur had met him. What did I do? What the hell did I do? Tommy sniffed. You said you'll do anything? Relations dawned at, on Techno's face. Well, not anything per se. Tommy's eyes began to water once more. Okay, okay, okay. Technoblade ran his hands across his face in frustration. Fine. One thing, and you shut up forever. I want to braid your hair, Tommy said at once. Technoblade winked. Blinked. What? What? Wilbur echoed. You once got me to let you once got me to let you ride me like a pony across the castle, and you ask him to let to let you braid his hair? Tommy nodded with the so solemn solemnity of a judge announcing someone's death sentence. Wilbur and Technoblade exchanged glances. Technoblade, one of the bewilderments and Wilbur, one of the album's betrayal. That was how they found themselves wasting the morning away, sitting together under on the damp grass. Wilbur leaned back on his hands and raised his face to the sun, letting the light settle against his sin, his skin. He could hear Tommy scurrying around, gathering flowers, as the spring breeze blew through the gardens. For a moment, all Wilbur could feel was all sudden, all com all consuming affection, not for anything in par in particular, for everything, for the brilliant spinning wheel in the sky, turning everything into burnished gold, for the soft dirt beneath his hands, for the air in his lungs, and for the pollen on his tongue, for the distant sound of his brother's footsteps, for the boy sitting beside him. Against all odds, Wilbur found he might actually like yield more tolerance. For the levity that had started to chase away more and more exhausting, exhausting thoughts. He cracked one eye open and found Technoblade staring at him again, with an all too serious look. What? Wilbur asked. Can a man be glad he's not getting tossed around for the morning? Technoblade scoffed. Don't discredit my teaching skills like that. You have been getting tossed around less and less these days. Was it meant to be a compliment? None of my compliments will ever be meant. They will be passive-aggressive, at best. Openly hostile, at worst. Oh, of course. We have to pry po positive affirmation from your cold dead hands, is that it? Only way you'll learn it, Technoblade confirmed. They went silent as another breeze blew past them, blowing Technoblade's unbound hair across, across his face. Then, before Wilbur could think, think twice, he said, What did you mean before when you told Father up our tutoring session were a, discre a, distrac a distraction? A distraction from what? Technoblade's expression darkened for a fraction of a second before he schooled it into careful neutralization. He shrugged nonchalantly. Well, growing boy like you, you're meant to have hobbies beyond whatever you were doing before. I read, Wilbur said, and played music. That was a significant distraction, I think. Not according to Filza. Why do you talk like that, by the way? Wilbur shifted to look technically squarely in the eyes. You called a king Filza. Which I can excuse because you're, well, you. But father al also calls you an old friend. And I've asked mother because father tells mother everything. But she never heard of you before. And you, all these things about we weapon and warfare. Far too much. 
You have found a kingdom that has enjoyed peace for decades, Princeling, Technoblade said, with a world's worth of exhaustion in his voice. Beyond those walls, it's different. Knowing we're young is not entirely uncommon. Kids just grow faster out there. They have to. Lorba took fistful of grass and threw it at Techno's face. Technoblade, un unamused, simply blew the grass from his face. Very mature, your highness, Techno said dryly. You're more being all sad again, Wilbur muttered, pulling his knees up to his chin. He looked up as Tommy came toddling back towards them, his arms burst of collar. Yellow Altsusemi Rias. Altsurumenrias. White daisies, purple. Malvias and Frisias, the color of Techno's hair. Why do they have? Why do they have so many different difficult names for for flowers? They're flowers. Um, but how long I'm still reading for? For half an hour. Sorry if it's later than. You hoped. I only just saw it. But thank you for the question. I'm gonna be reading uh, still for half an hour. And like, depending on... The chapters are kind of long. So when this chapter is done and I still have time left. We'll probably like go in a Discord call. And just chat with people until the stream ends. Because this book is quite big. As you might notice. My throat is hurting quite a lot, so yes. <laughs> oh god, Technoblade groaned as Tommy dumped his collection before them proudly. Tommy grinned as he kneeled behind Technoblade. Dad used to braid Mama's hair all the time before she got tired. He taught me how. Technoblade turned towards Wilbur. Should I be worried? Very, Wilbur said say sagely. At least he doesn't have scissors this time, he added, recalling a particular incest in butler who foolishly offered himself to be Tommy's training dummy last year and then ended up with less hair than he bargained for. Tommy turned Techno's head away from Wilbur. Hold still, he ordered, beginning to take hands full of Technoblade's hair, tugging him into place. Ow! Techno said after a particularly harsh pull. Sorry, Tommy said cheerful and began to braid in earnest. Wilbur sat back and watched him in silence. His variocus tutor and his even more variocus younger brother. The sunlight seemed to catch in the tangles of Tommy's hair, making it shine like a golden halo. Wilbur had never seen anyone as focused as Tommy was in that moment, working through Technoblade's hair, pausing only to debate on what flower should go where. And Technoblade, for his part, did not move at all, or let out so much as a word of complaint, even when Tommy took time to educate them all on what exactly each flower meant. I could write a song about this, Wilbur mused, and then marveled at the thought it was as if a block he had been carrying for years lifted, and that his art was now inches away from his hand, if he had only brought his guitar with him today. Tomorrow, he promised himself, I'll write our song tomorrow. There, Tommy said at last, tying the end of the braid off with a red ribbon Te Technoblade often used himself. Wilbur blinked in surprise. Tommy, that's actually good, really good. Technoblade reached back and ran his hands delicately over the elegant braid and the flowers woven into it. He hummed appreci appreciatively, then caught himself before he could f fully smile because he was still Technoblade after all. Decent, was his only comment. I'm not done yet, Tommy said, and pursued one more flower, a single yellow rose. This is my favorite. He added as he gently tucked the flower behind Technoblade's ear. 
The one that had the emerald earring that Wilbur had found so familiar. Because it means friendship. Technoblade stiffened. His mouth opened and closed like he was trying to breathe, but forgot how. Before he finally said, Are we friends then? Tommy stood and brushed the grass off his pants while obviously... Obviously? Oh, hey! He son the sudden excitement in Tommy's tone caught both Technoblade and Wilbur's attention. He began waving to someone in the distance. His smile as bright as life itself. It's dad and mama! Mother? Wilbur was on his feet at once, his heart hammering in his chest like a moth, a moth set on, fl on flame. Sure enough, that was mother, out in the sun once more. For the first time in over a year, Wilbur took in took in a shaky inhale, not daring to breathe again, as if the image before him would disappear like smoke. Mother, smiling at them as she walked arm in arm with father through the garden. Tommy ran as fast as his tiny leg could carry him and launched himself into their mother's waiting arms. Wilbur couldn't ignore the brief flash of pain that flickered over his mother's features as she gathered Tommy into a hug. But neither could he help his relief seeing her walk at all. Well, Technoblade said from behind him, go ahead then. Wilbur turned to his tutor and before Technoblade could prote protest, took him by the wrist and dragged him over to where mother and father were waiting. Father's smile was gentle and welcoming, and Wilbur could almost forgive the sadness that remained in his eyes, like a ghost hovering at the edges of a celebration. You must be Technoblade, Mother said happily, carrying Tommy in her arms as she addressed the tutor. I do apologize that it takes that it has taken us this long to be acquired. Though Phil's, Phil was been telling me of all you have done for our Wilby. Wilbur expected Technoblade's usual icy jabs and was quite surprised when he bowed his head that it could pass as a difference to an untrained eye. It has been a pleasure to meet you, your majesty. Your sons have told me much about you. Mother gave Technoblade a conspiritual grin as she asked. And I trust all they have said in, is in my favor, yes? Nothing about how sharp my tongue can be when I'm cranky? Oh, I assure you, they have painted you as nothing less than perfect, Technoblade glances at father. Although Phil Sam might have said a thing or two about your rigid standards for tea. Oh, I assure you, they have painted... Oh, wait, yeah, okay. Father chuckled. He pressed closer to Mother and Tommy, keeping an arm around Mother's waist as if to steady her, as if to hold her together just a little bit longer. I told you that in confidence, Techno. Technoblade, Mother repeated. It's a rather odd name. I said the same thing, Tommy added brightly, always eager to be part of the adult's conversation. Technoblade only shrugged, once again demonstrating a level of civility that Wilbur could never have expected of the same man that regardly combated the king's order. I would feel too much like a traitor if I abandoned it now. After all these years with it, it was my one constant companion, more, more loyal than most. Loyalty is a rather precious gift, Mother sighed softly. She transferred Tommy to one arm and reached out with the other, until she was cupping Technoblade's cheek. I do hope, my boy, she continued, her voice as tranquil as a still lake, that you will find the people you can trust more than your own name. You deserve that, and more, and all of you have done for my family. Technoblade blinked slowly at her, for one struck speechless. Tommy giggled. Techno is blushing. I am not. Technoblade spat hotly. Yes, you are, Tommy Coates, leaning back into Mother's arms, safe in the belief that she would never drop him. You so are. Tommy, don't torture the poor child, Mother said, even as she giggled herself. 
Will? Father reached out and ruffled Wilbur's hair playfully. You look a hundred miles away. Wilbur exhaled slowly. I'm just remembering. Rem remembering what? His mother soft smile, Tommy's cheery laugh, Technolay's half hearted protest. Father's hand on his head, everything. Nothing, Wilbur said. Forget I said anything, he smiled. As his father, for once without preparation, had never felt so light. He was almost a son again. Would you like to watch Techno and I spar? Father's expression softened. Of course I would be delighted to. It was the last good day. The knock came at midnight. It dragged Wilbur from the comfort of a dreamless sleep. Wilbur! Technically's voice, urgent, almost angry. Wilbur, open the door! Wilbur threw off his covers and bolted for the door. Technoblade stood outside his bedchambers, his red eyes blazing in the dark. He said the three would, words that would come to haunt Wilbur until the, until the day he died. It's your mother. They ran through the castle, Wilbur for the first time outpacing his tutor. They arrived at a long hallway that led to his parents' bedchambers, already choked with servants. Move! Technoblade demanded, his voice booming over the din. Move or I'll make you! The servants rushed to the sides, clearing a path for Wilbur and Technoblade. Wilbur couldn't resist and couldn't register any of their faces or their voices. All there was was silence, until the worst sound Wilbur had ever heard. An anguish cry that turned Wilbur's, Wilbur's blood cold. Tommy. Tommy is here. He burst into the room and found his brother, brother curled all into a ball by the foot of the bed. The bed where his mother lay. Sleeping. No. Not sleeping. Not sleeping, not sleeping. Wilbur could not breathe. Tommy was still crying, crying for their mother, for their father. Father! Wilbur's eyes scanned the room, but there was no trace of the king, no trace of the man who had just lost his wife. Tommy! Technoblade pushed past Wilbur and, and into the room. Wilbur could see him, he could see it all, but he f but it felt like watching someone else's life happen from leagues under the sea. Everything happened too slowly, too distantly. Technoblade kneeling by his brother, prying him off the cold floor. Tommy wrapping his arms around Technoblade's neck, burying his head into his shoulder and screaming. Screaming so loud, so loud, too loud. Technoblade turning towards Wilbur, handing him something, pressing it into Wilbur's cold fingers. Wilbur looked down at his hands. It was a letter. Crumbed, tear stained by his own tears, he realized belatedly. Techno, it said. Tell the boys I'm sorry, and tell Wilbur he will be a better king than I ever was. The world fell out of, out from the world fell fell out from under Wilbur's feet, leaving him suspended in the air, free falling with no true end. No, he thought, or maybe said. Or maybe screamed, No, no, no! This was, now this was not how it was supposed to go! Oh, said the voices. But it already happened before. Wilbur blinked, and blinked again. Father's gone? He said, not taking his eyes from the, left, from the letter. He left? Wilbur, said Blaze's voice, rising above tra Tommy's agonizing sobbing, was... That worry in the other boy's voice. I found a letter slipped under my door. And by the time I came here, it was too late. Your mother, she was also gone. The letter began to shake violently. Or not the letter, Wilbur's hands. But she was, she was just here this morning. She was, us. she watched us spar. She was smiling. She was, she was alive. Technoblade, techno. This was inevitable. Wilbur clamped his hands over his ears. Shut up! It was meant to be. Go away! Wilbur fell to his knees, pressing his hands tighter and tighter to block out the sounds. 
I thought I'd gotten rid of you. You said you were going to leave me alone. A sudden pain placed on Bulba's arm, and he opens his eyes to find Technoblade kneeling in front of him, his hand's iron grip around Wilbur's wrist. Tommy was gone. When did that happen? And the silence was he left behind was almost as bad as the screaming. Come back to me, Wilbur, Technoblade ordered. Who do you hear? You, Wilbur said, halting, haltingly. He was not for this act, not for the stage, and the voices. Technoblade nodded, easing his grip on Wilbur's wrist. I can help you. No, no one can. Wilbur squeezes his eyes shut, but all he could see was his mother's still form, father's letter. Wilbur, look at me. Wilbur shook his head. I can't. Then listen to me. I can help you, Technoblade repeated firmly, because I have voices too. Wilbur's lungs began to ache with the quickness of his breaths. Do you? He sounded like a child seeking for comfort from a distant figure. But there was too much pain to make room for shame. I do, Technoblade said. So breathe with me. Until they go away, we can figure out the next step together. That was all they did. They breathed. In and out and in again. Technoblade's hand on his wrist and his sticky sweet smell of rotting flowers keeping him rooted to the ground, to the universe. In and out and in again. And in between one breath and the next, Wilbur finally remembered where he learned heard the name Technoblade before. Father, he... Wilbur swallowed down a sob. He told me a story once. When I was young, the first time the voices ever talked to me. He told me a story about an immortal god who was doomed to hear voices in his head forever. A blood god. Technoblade. You're a god? Don't worry about that now. His voice was distant but kind. It doesn't matter. But I don't remember how the story ended. Exhaustion was a heavy blank blanket, weighing him down until he was leaning on Technoblade's shoulder. His throat felt raw, like he'd eaten broken glass. This story has no end, the voices said, but they sounded distant too. Tell me how the story ends, Wilbur begged, even as he felt the last of his consciousness slowly, slowly fracture on into nothingness. Tell me how, tell me you'll still be there when I close the book. Wilbur, I, Technoblade mumbled, something too low to hear, and then he said, okay, I'll be there. Wilbur wanted to say more, or, per or perhaps he didn't. Outside, somewhere far away, bells were began to toll, chiming mother, mother's, chiming his mother's death. Bolat, parading his ancestor, extension. Tell the boys I'm sorry. His father's voice this time is a quiet, as quiet as the rest. In between one breath and the next, Wilbur was king. Between one breath and the next, he was asleep. Oh my goodness, that was only chapter two, guys! Oh my gosh! I am... Oh my goodness. Oh, we have five minutes left, guys, and we, we have been reading for two hours, and we only got, like, two chapters done. Oh my goodness, and we have... We might need to, like... I am I am not kidding. I am not kidding. We just finished chapter 2. We just finished chapter 2 and we did 2 hours out of it. <laughs> and it has still like 1 2 3 4 5 more chapters, so we we at least have to do 3 more streams. But Saturday is uh okay okay we'll do a vote we'll do a vote everyone 
uh, should I do next stream? Minecraft Hardcore? Or do the next two chapters of this book? Hardcore or book? Because I I want to do what you guys want me to do. Okay? I don't mind choosing between those two. Book? Alright, anyone else? Anyone else? Come on, it's not a fair fair vote if it's only one person. Okay, two people ha who have a book. Two people who do book. Anyone else? Going once. Going twice. Book. We're going... Okay, so... Tomorrow, same time, book, same same time, same not not the same stream, but next stream. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so we have the three minutes left. In this time, we can like talk a bit if you guys want. How did your day go? How did you guys' day go? Because we can like... I can't start a new chapter right now. It's too short. It's too short, guys. It's too short. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wait, does that... Wait, 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 wait. Okay, next chapter. We have a lot of angst. I love it. Wait, not next chapter, but next stream. I, I, I reckon. I think there, there's gonna be a lot of, uh, a lot of angst. Oh, how so? Pretty, pretty stressful. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Bad. I, I broke down on a random gay show. Oh. I'm so sorry to hear that. Why is everyone having a bad day? That's not fair. That's not fair. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. I'm so sorry to hear that, Sunny. I hope you're I hope you will get better soon and that you will find a better thing. And that you find a reason why you broke down and that you do something about it. And Annie, I hope I hope that you find the way the reason why you get so much stress and do something about it because stress is not it's not a good thing. It keeps you it keeps you going for a while and then it just backfires like hell. Don't worry, I've been there. I know how it feels. <laughs> oh, by the way, if you guys want Oh, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. If you guys want, you can join my Discord. Just go to my about page. Or follow me on Instagram or Twitter. Let's see. What else do we have? In my case, I have a lot of important exams. Well, I hope you're going to do good in your exams. I believe in you. And you're going to rock them. I know. Me knows, because me is psychic. No, me is not psychic. But me knows that people who... People, usually the people who stress about their exams often do pretty good because they know how difficult it will be and they will act on those difficulties. You just graduated? Oh, congratulations! Congratulations! You feel old? Don't worry. I'm probably older than you, so don't worry about it. <laughs> I also graduated. I'm in college right now. So, let's see. <laughs> I always love it how people say, I feel old now. And I'm like, don't feel old. People are allowed to feel old when they are 40 and, 40 and older. Not, not under that, you have no right to feel old. Oh. 
Oh my goodness. Wait, wasn't it? Wait, hold on. Now I'm confused. When was MCC? When is the next MCC? Because if it's like on um Saturday, then I have to like I have to raid someone, you know? I have to. That's not a question anymore. That's not that's that is not a question. That's just something that has to happen. Let's see. Let's let's go for a, to MCC. Um. Oh. June twenty sixth. Oh, that's tomorrow. Like literally, guys. The the moment my stream ends, MCC begins. So if you want, you can stay to my in my stream till the end, and then I'm gonna raid anyone. Who plays in MCC. Probably Eretz. Because he's my conference streamer. But who knows. I'll see who uh, who is there. And who isn't. Uh, so let's see. Alright. Now everyone. Uh, I'm going to end stream soon. Let's. Should I read? No I'm not going to read someone. Uh, if you go to my about page, if you're on your phone, you can just scroll the screen. Uh, sc if you are on your phone, you can scroll the stream up and then you come in my about page. Then you find a uh, button that says Discords. You can click on that and then you're automatically taken to my Discords. Um, uh, oh yeah, Dream will not... Uh, no, Dream will not uh, take part in this MCC. Technoblade will... Together with Wilbur and Grian. So, Dream Team 2.0, I believe. <laughs> um, let's see. I can pull up the MCC teams quite quick if you want. Uh, uh, let's see. Oh, I don't know if this is accurate, but uh, Wisp, Tabo, and Tommy in it. Uh, Wisp, Tomo, Tabo, Tommy in it, and Joey are Lime Llamas. Uh, the Red Rabbits are LD Shadow Lady, Small Smallish Beans, Captain Puffy, and Vic Star. The C. The Green Guardian are It's Funny, Rainbows, Golden Glare, and Draenoid Dragon. I don't know if you say it like that. Uh, the Cyan Creepers are Captain Puffy, Tap L, Skeppy, and Bat Boy Halo. Ooh, I'm rooting for that one. I like that team. I don't see, like, the team of... Uh, oh! Uh, purple pandas are... Oh, this is a different one. Because... Wait. Wait, 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 wait. I am... Wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna do it different, guys. I'm gonna do it... I'm gonna do it different. I'm gonna do it different. Damn it! Let me just... June. Um. Okay, red rabbits. Uh, hold on. Team yellow. Ellen, Mike, uh, Jane, and Andy. Team lime llamas. Whips. Wisp. Top of it. Tommy and it. And Joey. Gracefia, I think. Uh, it's let's see. Why? Oh, the first half of the. But I want the other half. Come on. Oh, complete list. Okay, there we go. All right. Uh. 
Okay, Team Aqua Axolotls is Illumina, uh, Gizzy Gazzle, of uh, Gizzy Gaza, Keycraft, and Ryogri Rocky? If you say it like that, sorry if I said it wrong. Uh, Blue Bats is Niachu, Samuel, Shovel, and A. Christine. Team Purple Pandas is Jerome, ASF, Mefs, Burren, and Eretz. And Pink Parrots is Green, Solidary, Technoblade, and Wilbur Soot. Kijk, uh, Minecraft Championship 15 will mark the highly anticipated return of Technoblade. He was once a regular competitor in each championship since the second tournament, but seemed to disappear from the team roster after the Minecraft Championship 11. Technoblade is an extremely accomplished and skilled player, an aspect only elevated by his alongside equally skilled teammates. <laughs> but yeah, those are like the most the most teams that um the most uh teams that I know of some people that are in it. Let's see. I thought I thought maybe Fundy would be here too, but he isn't. But I'm I am rooting for like pink parrots because like Technoblade Wilbur and Grian. Technoblade and Wilbur together. Also, we get to clingy duo. Yep, yep. Technoblade and Wilbur are together, together with Green and Pink Parrots and Tabo, Tommy in it, uh, Wisp and Joey Garfi Garcifa are in Lime Llamas. I'm rooting for those two because I know Tommy in it and Tabo together are a very good duo. But I also know Technoblade and Wilbur Soot, chaotic duo. With a lot of anarchy and blow power. Alongside with Grian, who is actually pretty good at PvP. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna carry. They're gonna carry. So yeah. Those are the Minecraft Championship uh duo teams. Well not the teams, but just uh but the yeah. You get what I mean. <laughs> So, I am probably, if Technoblade is going to stream on Twitch, which I, which I highly doubt, if he is going to stream on Twitch, I will, I will, uh, I will raid him. If not, I will do Wilbur. If Wilbur is again late, I will do Tommy. If Tommy, nay, what, no, wait, 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 wait. If it's not Technoblade, I will do Eret. If Ter if Eret is not live at the point that I am ending stream, I will do Wilbur. If Wilbur is not live at the point I'm ending stream, I will do Tommy because I know Tommy is always on time. If that's not working, then I won't rate. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I need to make up my mind. Uh, let's see. Okay. We can raid again. We can raid. I can raid. F screw this. Yes, yeah, say. I think I think he'll be alive on YouTube too. Because that's Technoblade for you. Be hot. He has a Twitch account. He has a Twitch account. So let's see. Okay, people. Who should we raid? Who should we raid? We can raid. Wasn't MCC sponsored by YouTube? So that's why Dream will not participate. I don't know why Dream doesn't participate. We can try to figure out. We can try to figure out. Why isn't Dream in MCC 15? Um... Hold on. Why? Um, when was this? This. Yeah, but that stream is like two hours and ten minutes. I'm not gonna read. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Actually, Minecraft champion. 
Uh, Neo Technoblade says why he didn't join MCC 13. Oh, okay. Well, maybe I will obviously, like, leave it on... Um, also pointed out in my Discord that MCC is tomorrow. So, if you want to keep in check on that, you can join my Discord. Um... And let's see, who can we raid? We have Renbu, Filza, Oliver Whelmed, and Kef Sauce. Okay, go Renbu is playing Minecraft, Filza is playing Minecraft, Oliver Whelmed is just chatting, and Kef Sauce is playing Overwatch. But I think Kef Sauce is doing Dutch today, so we have Renbu, Filza, and Oliver Whelmed. Who should we raid, guys? Uh, should we raid Phil? I am still confused how Renbu, by the way, has more viewers than Phil's on Minecraft. Dadza? Yeah, Dadza, we're gonna raid Dadza. Okay. Now, Dadza. Send them my love, okay, chat? Three, two... Oh, wait. Yep, raid. Axolotl. It's okay though, Kristen. We don't plan on having kids. So it's fine. It's fine. We have we have twenty thousand kids right now online. <laughs> hey dad, so happy to see you again. Welcome back, Shmer. Welcome back, Mer. Push push push. Hello, four push, push. swoon. This topic is sad. Anyways, I finally got to see my friends after six months of being away at uni. Please no more death, thanks. Oof. Yeah, let's change the topic, so Phil, chat. Did you see that the 12 weeks are usually unpaid leave? Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, it's even worse than I thought. It's even more... It's even more terrible than I thought. Oh, God. Can we stop... Can we stop being depressed now? Can we stop? Hi, Phil. I hey, chat. Who wants to look at some ads to feel happy? Let's watch some joining. audible May ads. I request we as group fight pollen? Uh, <laughs> Please save me, Dad, sir. I'm actually dying. He wants to see what's out on Prime right now. Jesus Christ. All right, let's do, let's do the thing. Let's do the thing. So somebody requested a three-minute ad. Autotunes, specifically, requested a three-minute ad 10 minutes ago. If you have a Prime right now, I would advise...